Mills of Monterey, um, the, the image uh, on the screen is the only one that I've been able to find so far that really shows the old sawmill um, mm. and you can see the mill in the background. Uh, as near as I can tell, uh, uh, the dam is right over there. Um, and the question I'm asking is, why is Monterey Village here? Why isn't it in the old center where it was originally intended to be? And the answer literally, literally, not figuratively, literally is under our feet. The library sits on the mill, the, the mill site, not on the building. I'll show you some images uh, uh, of the mills that were here. Um, uh, so we'll start with the, the, the plan from the 17, uh, 30s into the 1740s and 50s, um, up. This is the proprietor's plan of township number one. Um, this particular plan was from 1753, but it was basically uh, laid out uh, in the 1730s. Uh, and the, the heavy dash line up here is where all the 63 proprietors' uh, home sites were uh, were laid out. Uh, the other lots were uh, extra lots, farm lot, mountain lot, wood lot, uh, that each of the proprietors uh, ended up with, with a total of one house lot and four additional lots totaling about 240 acres. Uh, the, the center of the town was supposed to be here. Uh, the meeting house is on lot number one. The first minister, Reverend Bidwell, was on lot number 25. The school lot was on lot 20. The second minister's lot was, was right adjacent to that. And lot number two was laid out for the mills uh, along Loom Brook. Um, so everything was centered uh, around that. And the main road what, there were three main roads, east-west uh, roads at that time. The Great Road, roughly Route 23, uh, uh, Hoopai Road, and Brett Road, um, in some ways was, was equally as important, in some cases more important, than uh, the what's now Route 23. Uh, and then Mount Hunger Art School Road, which continued... Uh, west and north to Stockbridge. Um, so the, you can see that the, those two roads that were going east-west to either to uh, Stockbridge were coming back down to go to, uh, to Sheffield and the north powers of Sheffield, Great Barrington. Uh, that was intended to be the center of the town. So what happened? Well, they attempted in 1738, 1739, they attempted to get a miller to come to build the mills. You have to, in order to have a settlement, you have to have a sawmill and you have to have a grist mill. Those are essential. You build your houses and then grind the grain so that you can have bread to eat. Um, so the first two uh, people they contacted considered it uh, and within a few weeks, came out, looked at the site, said, no, thank you. Um, after the second one declined, they, the proprietors who were in, uh, in the Boston area, uh, down in Watertown primarily, uh, did what government does when they have an issue to solve. They formed a committee uh, to come out from Boston uh, to township number one and find out what's wrong. <laughs> what, what happened to our plan? Uh, we have a master plan. And why didn't it, why isn't it working? Um, so they apparently, according to the records, the proprietor's records, the committee came back and said, yeah, I guess we can see why the millers are not too hot, new, too interested in building on Loon Brook. It's a pretty small brook. There's no big drops. doesn't have a huge watershed. Um, so where else can we build a mill? So they followed the water downstream 
um, came from Broom Brook down, joined with the outlet of Twelve Mile Pond, uh, and got down to right back here in back of the library and found a much larger watershed, much bigger flow, and a good drop uh, of, of uh, elevation. And they said, okay, this would be a good spot to build mills. So they, they gave back lot number two and reallocated the mill lot to be this area uh, of roughly 70 acres from the outlet of a 12-mile pond down to this stream. Uh, they offered that to Captain John Brewer from Hopkinton, and he said, yes, <laughs> uh, I will come uh, in 1739. And this is a blow up of uh, that last map. Um, so he, uh, in 1739, arrived uh, in the spring, uh, started uh, quite promptly to uh, to start building a sawmill, uh, which he had agreed to complete uh, uh, within a year, uh, and he had also agreed to complete a grist mill within two and a half years. Uh, he also agreed to saw as cheap as any of the other towns for uh, for at least ten years and keep the mill in good repair for twenty five years. Uh, both he, he and his heirs were bound by that. Um, uh, he was also paid um, about 60 pounds that proprietors assessed themselves uh, uh, to, to give him money to actually have this happen. Uh, so he not only uh, started building the sawmill, but within, uh, within a year he had brought two grindstones from the eastern part of the state uh, here to, uh, to build the grist mill. So he built, did better than what he had promised. Um, so now you have a bit of a problem. The civic center of the town is still up in what I'll call Old Center. Uh, I'll later refer to it as Upper Village. Uh, the, here's the meeting house. Uh, again, the uh, meeting house, the main roads, so all the proprietors are all up in that, that up on that ridge. Uh, uh, and yet the mills are down here. So, again, one of the things they had to do was build a road from the meeting house to the mills. So they built a road from Carrington Battelle Road, or created Carrington Battelle Road, Beartown Mountain Road, down, and then what is now the section of Turingham Road from uh, Beartown Road to the village. And uh, I plotted the meets and bounds, and it follows exactly mm -hmm. those roads. Um, it, it's... Uh, those roads have not changed <laughs> locations. They may have changed grade a little bit, but they haven't changed location. Uh, and it refers in the in the deeds to the cemetery uh, and some of the houses uh, along the way. Uh, uh, it passed uh, Jackson's Tavern, uh, and but it ended up down here by the sawmill on Christmas. So now you have a civic center and. The, the commercial center, the mills, uh, roughly two miles apart. Uh, so a lot of all, already in the you know in the first few years, the town has started to pull uh, in a couple of different directions. Um, just quickly, what did the first meeting house look like? It probably didn't look nearly as good as that, um, uh, but it, that's roughly the size and shape. Uh, of what the meeting house uh, was. Uh, uh, it was uh, 40 feet long, 32 feet wide. Had, it was high enough to have a tier, second tier of galleries, uh, as this illustrates. Uh, this particular one is up in Sandown, New Hampshire. Um, so, uh, moving forward, a little bit forward in times, so this is 1794 map uh, of uh, Tearingham, uh, at that time, Township Number One had incorporated in 1762 as Tearingham, which included both North Tearingham and South Tearingham. Uh, uh, South Tearingham eventually became Monterey. Uh, 
So it shows uh, a, a few interesting things. Here's the, the meeting house. And it's interesting, there's a little symbol, but there's also, just very faintly, there's a, an illustration of a, of a meeting house building that looks very much like the Sandown uh, meeting house that we just, I just showed you. Um, this is Kopai Road and Brett Road. And this is Main Road. Um, and this, by this time, there was another road through the Hopbrook uh, section, and there were uh, at this time, in South Herringham, uh, there was uh, A1 is Brewer's Sawmill, B2 was the grist mill, was a little bit downstream on the south bank uh, of the river. Uh, there was a second grist mill along Bill Brook, uh, as it was called on this map, uh, with, along what's now River Road. Uh, in the Hopbrook section, there were a few more. Uh, there was a sawmill in what's the center of, of Tyringham Village now, and a couple of grist mills along Hop Brook, um, and in the Sodom section, which is the eastern, uh, southeastern section near Otis, uh, there was a grist, uh, grist mill. And that's a blow up of that same map that focuses in uh, more on just the South Tyringham section. Uh, there was also, you can see in, in Sodom, there was also a fulling mill where they uh, would full wool to take uh, to make it, it so it could be used and, and weave it. Wrong. Yes. Is, is that a second body of water above what we now call Lake Garfield? Uh, that's a mountain. That's Mount Oh, that's Mount Humboldt. Yes. Okay. So yeah, it's probably a little hard to see. This is also a uh, mountain over here uh, in Bear Town. Here's a uh, six mile pond, Lake Buell, uh, and this is the hill in the back of the uh, bull farm. Uh, this road here, main road, is the road from Great Barrington to Tiringham, uh, and that says County Road. <coughs> Uh, this is um, 40 years later, 1830. Um, a lot more developed. A lot happened in those in those 40 years. Even though the population uh, of Tiringham peaked in 1800, there were 1700 people living yeah. in Tiringham. The combined Tiringham, North and South. Uh, that was the highest population. 1810, it declined slightly. 1820. It just declined considerably more, um, uh, but you can see a lot had a lot more roads and a lot more mills, um, uh, sawmill, carding mill, grist mill, uh, multiple sawmills, uh, a rake factory. Um, uh, this is the rake factory uh, on Hoopai Road. Uh, there's a stream that comes uh, from up by Mount Hunger. Uh, comes down and feeds what, on this map, it's the only place it shows up as a rake factory. Uh, interesting iron ore bed is shown over on Brett Road. Uh, by now, the meeting, the first meeting house that was on the Bidwell House property had moved down to about half a mile uh, to be along Beartown Mountain Road. In, in, uh, old center. Um, so that was, again, still a very important, uh, very important center. A lot of the homes uh, were still centered up in that area. Did, did they move the meeting, the first meeting house, or did they no, build? No, they built a, built a new one. Um, the uh, the first meeting house that was started in the 1740s, used in the 1750s, uh, through the 1790s, uh, was a, not a very good building. It's always cold, drafty, windy. Um, uh, they decided to build a second meeting house, say, say, a half a mile further south, which further antagonized the people down in Hawk Brook who had to come up the mountain and now had to go another half a mile downhill to get back. And shortly after that, they ended up building their own meeting house in the Hawk Brook section. Yes. Was the second meeting house on the parade ground site? 
Uh, just behind the parade ground, yeah, is where the, where the meeting house is. I'll show you an image here in a minute uh, of that. Uh, so, uh, again, there was a lot happening in North Terringham, but I'm going to focus more on the South Terringham uh, Monterey uh, section. Uh, so, again, there are a lot more mills, sawmill, carding mill, grist mill, sawmill, sawmill, sawmill. Uh, there's that great factory that I referred to, and the iron ore dead. And, uh, there were other cottage industries uh, as well, but these were the ones that showed up on the, this uh, 1830 map. So again, a further enlargement of that um, that area. So there's you can see in the uh, upper village. Uh, old, what we now call Old Center, uh, meeting house. Uh, there were, of course, the cemeteries. Uh, there were, there's, uh, there were a number of mills. There was a tanning yard uh, on Moon Brook that John Devotion did well uh, had. Uh, there was a great part of the uh, home factory uh, along Moon Brook. Um, so there were there was a, quite a bit of industry in in the village, and that but again more of it was definitely down in the lower. So this is a, is an image, the only uh, good image I'm aware of, uh, from 1857. Uh, it was drawn by uh, Marshall Spring Lou Bidwell, called Lou because he apparently had some medical condition that he took a silver. For and it turned his skin blue. <laughs> um, uh, but he was quite an artist, as you can see uh, here. This, here's his uh, signature down here, Marshall Spring uh, Bidwell, Jr., uh, in July 1857. Uh, this is looking along Beartown Road. Um, the, that's the, the brick house the, the, uh, over here, which still is there. Uh, some probably know it as the Lankanaw House. Various other owners. Um, uh, New Brook coming through there, um, and the meeting house, uh, the second meeting house, uh, slightly behind the uh, the parade ground. Uh, we think that this building up there is the old schoolhouse uh, on the corner of Fairview Road. Um, interestingly enough, and just jumping ahead uh, in time slightly. Uh, the second, this second meeting house, uh, when the third meeting house was built here across the street, the two churches coexisted for about 20 years. There were two congregations, uh, that, and eventually the, the uh, congregation in the old center decided they couldn't, there wasn't enough population to support the two churches. Um, so they, uh, they decided to sell that building. Um, it was put out to bid, uh, and it was bought by the Methodist Society in Wissapanik, uh, who uh, disassembled it, uh, took it to Wissapanik, reassembled it, and it was used as the Methodist Church um, for uh, over 100 years. And the building physically still exists. It's no longer a church. It's now a recording studio. Uh, it's on the... Uh, Main, Main Street in Houston. Uh So we're now moving ahead, uh, 1858. Uh, so this would have been 10, 11 years after uh, uh, Monterey had become Monterey, separate from uh, from Terringham. Um, you notice originally Terringham ended right here, uh, but in 1849, uh, I think it was, this section of New Marlboro was annexed to uh, and became part of Monterey. Uh, the Chestnut Hill section of Sandus Field had not yet been annexed. That, that came a, a decade later. Um, so the, uh, this map, this, um, so here's, this is the upper village uh, area, again, showing 
the Congregational Church, the Second Meeting House, uh, a lot of residences, the schoolhouse there at the corner of Fairview. Uh, it does not show uh, any mills, but we know there were some, some mills, the comb factory. Um, uh, down here at the outlet of uh, 12 Mile Pond, uh, there was a twine company and a cotton mill. Uh, there was a complex of buildings uh, there uh, that were uh, industrial. And we understand that the cotton mill was one of those, later became a rat trap factory. And that was another essential. <laughs> uh, uh, there were a lot of rat traps and a lot of need for those. Um, so here are uh, three of those buildings that are uh, still extant. Uh, uh, the cotton factory, uh, twine factory, and then the loom house uh, on Beartown Road that was used as a home factory. Uh, so now we're into the lower village, and you can see the concentration of, of businesses and mills. Um, the 26B is the sawmill, right back here, uh, right behind us. Uh, 26C is the sawmill and shingle mill. Uh, 26E, a little bit further downstream, uh, was the woolen factory, uh, and then. The 38s uh, were a paper mill by the uh, Robert L. McDowell. Uh, apparently, the paper mill was started in the 1830s by John Manser, and it was built on the site of the grist mill. Uh, that's what it's, the records say. Not 100% sure of that, but the, the earlier map showed the grist mill on the south bank, but the paper mill was on the north bank. Um, so I'm not sure about that, but that's one record says that. Um, so this is an image uh, drawing of the paper mill. Uh, at that time, it was owned by the uh, O'Neill family from Lee, um, who operated it, it from 1867 until sometime around the 1880s. They, they were a large family of brothers from Lee, came here. Uh, some of them grew up here in Monterey uh, and reminisced about going to school with Elihu Harmon and walking uh, from the village down to New Marlboro to the, um, uh, to the academy uh, there. And then and Friday, uh, they walked down Monday morning and then Friday afternoon after school they would walk back. Uh, so that was, it was a uh, Berkshire Academy in New Marlboro, right behind the, old, uh, the, the mill. Um, yes, Steve. Could you go back to the previous map? <clears throat> so, 46, the shingle mill, is actually the actual mill was a lot closer to the Concapa. Yes, right. Um, do you have any information? Are you aware of that huge earthen dam that's down there? Uh, yeah. Uh, Although we should take a walk back there sometime. Yeah. I, I've, I've looked at it. I've tried to figure it out. I mean, there are various stories I've read that the road used to come through, um, you know, from here, came across and came out through that, that, through that area where the dam was. Yeah. Because um, it's, it's, it's huge. Yeah. It's a couple hundred feet long. Yeah. And in its day, above the mill pond, it was probably 12, 15 feet high. Yep. It's all stone. Yep. And I have yep. yet to find anybody who knows much about it. No, I, I know. And you mentioned it. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd like, love to go back there. I've, I've yeah. walked it from, from below, walked up. I haven't yeah. walked down the street. But you're right. The, the shingle mill is shown on this map is shown close to New Marble Road, but it was actually much further back uh, along uh, Fargo Grove or Palm Grove. Um, so, uh, you know, this, this drawing, uh, as I understand it, is that was the paper mill, this was the, the machine shop. Uh, there's a, a flume of that water. Uh, from upstream, and let me go back to that previous map. 
This is the only map that shows three dams on the river. You can see the upper dam that still exists. There was a middle dam that the embankment is there, and then there's a lower dam where the embankment is still there. But the other later maps don't show the three dams, but uh, clearly they were there. Um, and one of them, a later map, does show a flume uh, that served the, the uh, power uh, the paper. And, and where that 38 is, is right where there's a, a fairly significant fault. Yes. Um, and there's still a lot of stonework there. Yes, no yeah, worries. And I've got some photographs uh, that I'll show you in a, in a bit, what it looks like today. Mm -hmm. So, um, these are the foundations of the paper mill. Um, looking across um, at the, the paper mill and then part of the powerhouse. It's further back across the road. It's a little hard to see with the, all the vegetation. And actually, it's, this was in May before all the trees came down. <laughs> Uh, so moving ahead to 1871 uh, and 1876, um, similar time frames, uh, obviously different maps that have some slightly different information on them. Uh, this one doesn't have too much in the way of, uh, of identification um, on it, although it does show that, that sawmill that we were just talking about with him and the walkers back on the, farther back on the brook. Um, um, it just shows the buildings. It doesn't identify uh, what they are. Um, but it's, it, it, in many ways, it's a better map than the 1876 Atlas map. Um, so the 1876 detail of the, of the, the, the village, um, this is that flume that I was referring to that comes from about where the second dam uh, was even though they don't show the dam, and then the third dam was here. Um, so here you have uh, the, the sawmill, planing mill, saw, saw and shingle mill, carding mill, um, the workers' boarding house. Um, the the area is there. You can find that on the ground. It's a rectangular. It's a real swampy uh, area um, uh, now, but. Presumably at that time it was not. In various records, it's called different things. Uh, Wallace Tryon and his uh, calls it the Chickahominy House. Uh, the, the paper mill uh, calls it a, a coffee house. Um, uh, but apparently referring to the workers going there and drinking things other than coffee. <laughs> uh, because in 1897, uh, the paper mill burned down because apparently the workers were drunk from drinking too much cider or hard cider uh, from a distillery. So what did you say is there now, Rob, that you could still see? Uh, there, right now there's just a wet rectangle in the mm -hmm. ground, uh, oh, but I can find, you can find mm -hmm. that, you know, where that was. Uh, and the foundations of all these other mills are there. The stone foundations. I'll show you some photographs of those. The only one I'm not sure of what it was was this 38A. I never found a reference to what that was. And that's right where Bill Bidwell Park is. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. And I haven't found a, a foundation there. Uh, so uh, 1904 uh, Atlas map um, shows that most of those buildings were gone. The paper mill um, uh, building was there, but it was now a sawmill. Um, uh, so uh, apparently at some time around that, that time, Wallace Tryon recalls uh, in his reminiscences of 1970 World II, uh, that the buildings were in terrible de uh, decline, decay. Uh, he was not allowed to go in, in them. Um, because it was dangerous, uh, and uh, eventually um, his father, Bert Tryon, uh, bought the rights to them and tore them down and used the lumber, I think it's firewood, uh, mostly, 
um, is what he you know, recites. Uh, but this, uh, this, this map shows more or less mills and more um, of the, the structure of the, of the town. Um, the interesting, though, the library um, uh, was not here at that time. It was, was down where the post office uh, is. Uh, and that's another whole story. Um, but uh, that building apparently... When this got uh, built and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, my understanding is that the old library building got taken to and became the clubhouse for the, uh, or the, the starter's house for the golf club. Um, and then that burned down. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, it's just, there have some, so a few images of the old library building, which I'll show you. 25 is, of course, the, the store, um, and the, Congregational Church across the street. Um, there were a couple of other industries uh, uh, built. Uh, blacksmith shops uh, show up on on previous maps as well. Um, Albert Tryon, who arrived in 1850, among other things, was a blacksmith and had a blacksmith shop there at number 10 that shows up in, in various uh, various maps by different owners. Uh, and then number 32, uh, I'll come back to the Berkshire Hills Primary Association, uh, is a, a very important uh, industry. So here's what Monterey Village uh, looked like maybe in the 1870s. Uh, that little building was the library. Um, so how do you grow? <laughs> so those are telegraph lines then. Yeah, there's yeah there are some wires, so I'm not not 100% sure of the dates, but uh, on this one. but yeah, those look like there's some poles. The general store building fundamentally looks you know very much similar to the the windows, uh, uh, very similar. Except it's painted. Yes, well that's true. Yeah, very slowly, one board at a time. <laughs> Sometimes I think they go backwards. They kind of <laughs> use it and then start painting. Then it's not painting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In our section, you're not seeing it. Yeah. I said, I swear that was blue, and now it's not. Um, uh, so this is another view, uh, view of the general store, and you just call attention to the weight, the weight scale here. So you could drive up onto this scale, and it would, it would uh, weigh goods coming in or out of town. Um, that was an important uh, uh, important uh, component. It looks like there's you can start to see some buildings in the background in this photograph, but it's it's hard to tell exactly what they were. I think those are part of the the uh, sawmill, but uh, not a not a great image. Um, uh, so portrait of Wilbur C. Langdon, who obviously was a very important person. Both in terms of the store, the mills, I mean, he owned a lot and operated a lot. And then uh, uh, Henry Langdon and Jenny uh, Langdon, uh, his, his son. Um, fairly uh, not too old photograph, probably 1940s or 50s uh, of the dam. Um, and uh, this is an image looking upstream. Uh, of the mill pond from sta probably standing on the dam. Um, the, this is the back of the general store. There, the shed that was part of the storage for the, um, for the general store. The library, the back of the library building, uh, and the building in the, in the background beyond the uh, bridge is the, uh, the Grange. Oops. So uh, this image uh, over here um, is from across the river and again shows the general store, uh, a shed that was apparently uh, housed delivery of, uh, wagons and, and equipment in the back of the library building. And you can also see this driveway leading down to the back of the general store where uh, the supplies would come in, get weighed, go um, down that driveway, 
under the, the back of the general store, and then there was a lift uh, that would hoist, that they could hoist the, uh, uh, there was a trap door apparently in the back of the store that they could hoist the stuff from the, the wagons up into the first or second floor. They went all the uh, way up to the attic. Right? Yes, up, all the way up to the attic to store it. Like, uh, yeah, so it was a pulley, some sort pulley of pulley system. 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 Right from the, the, uh, yeah. 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 Thank you, thank you. Um, so that image is from 1918. Uh, this uh, is the uh, the mill on the the Brookmead, the back of the Brookmead property, uh, the J.K. Hansel mill on the Fargo and Palmer Brook, um, above the Compot River. Uh, and various stories about what happened there, I mean, grain, ground, saws, logged, or uh, log sawed, cider pressed, Oh, there are apparently a lot of different things. I haven't seen definitive records about everything that went on there, but uh, apparently it was a, a, a busy place. And that and that sits directly above where that huge earthen dam is. Right, right. So here's a, a few other uh, mills in various other places. So the one on the left um, is the remains of the Clifford brochure uh, saw and grist mill on the Compart River on the River Road. Um, and you just barely see part of a turbine uh, under that wooden uh, framework. And then on the right hand side, these both of these photographs came out of the 1997 Monterey book. Um, and it was described uh, as an unidentified mill. Uh, obviously, a water water wheel with gears and, and uh, fairly substantial um, uh, piece of equipment. But it'd be nice to know where, where that was, but we don't know at this point. Um, so this is the the Berkshire Hills Creamery. Some of you probably have some have heard of this or you know some of some of this. Um, so it was a cooperative. Um, uh, effort among the farmers uh, in town. Uh, the, the milk and cream was collected. Uh, there were, it was large enough that there were two different routes, one on the eastern side of the town, one on the western side of the town that would bring the cream in every day. Uh, it was processed, uh, made primarily into butter, some cheese. Uh, it was taken uh, by wagon into Great Barrington. Some of it was sold locally in Great Barrington, but some of it was, was uh, put on a train and shipped to New York City. It was The, the butter uh, was stamped uh, uh, BHC from Berkshire Hills Creamery uh, and then wrapped in paper. Um, and uh, this uh, uh, is a receipt uh, for April 1916 for Delmer C. Tryon, Cindy's what, great great grandfather? Um, only one great. <laughs> <laughs> only one great. One great. Uh, for his uh, part uh, of it, so he delivered 388 pounds of cream, uh, of which there was 85.36 pounds of butter fat, and he got paid $29.55 for the month of April for, for the. Uh, well, uh, just an interesting side note. It's, it's you can't really see it very well on this image, but right there is a sign that reads uh, Delaval um, Cream Separator, and on Dick Tryon's barn today is a sign for De, De Laval Cream Separator. So <laughs> uh, that company. You know, Kept the business going for a long time. Uh, well, you need to tell people where this building is now. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I did. So, this is Main Road, and this is New Marble Road. And this is where Walsh's garage was, and where Boyd lived, and where uh, uh, Kyle. Kyle now lives. So, uh, uh, before you, so this is not the same building. This building, the building was uh, taken down. Um, the, I think you said the 
Mrs. Eaton. Mrs. Eaton bought the property in the 1940s. And it had not been in use for many, many years, so the building was falling down. So she had the building taken down. Um, Wallace took some of the lumber to use it in building some of the other houses here in town. And she built a gas station. And my great aunt, uh, Joe Johnson, and her husband, Joe Johnson, Joe, Joe, uh, ran the first gas station, and then they, a few years later, sold it to Parker Harmon. So I don't know if anybody has been around here long enough to know Parker Harmon. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the parrot? Huh? Well, the parrot, yeah. <laughs> Um, the parent had quite a mouth on him. <laughs> um, and um, then after Parker Harmon, then it was sold to Millie Walsh, who lived in the house next door. Uh, she was a Kenny. And um, she and her, her son was Brooke Walsh. They had a health food store, among other things, and I think her daughter and her granddaughter. I she was a Millie, so Millie was a hairdresser as well, so she had a hairdresser shop in the basement. So a lot of interesting things happened at that. Before, in before that. you, it was very clearly the cream, not not the whole milk, and then then they separated that down to how many pounds of butter fat. Um, that they, that's what they got paid based on. Um, so yeah, and that's an, it, it, interesting. All the things that have happened with that building. So now we move to today, um, uh, and going back to what I said right at the beginning, the history of why Monterey is where it is is literally under our feet. So here, here is the the library as it exists today. The stone foundation here in the foreground is the sawmill, the, the one side of the sawmill. And there's another stone foundation back, which we'll show you in the next image. Um, uh, so, so the, again, this right in the back of the library is where the sawmill, uh, where the sawmill is. Um, down further, further downstream, um, you see the dam and the library through the, through the trees is the foundation of the variously called the shingle mill. Um, there's a couple of different things. And then this is another image looking in a slightly different direction toward uh, Brook Bend. Uh, and on the ground, those foundations are very clear. Uh, a little bit hard to see in this other um, the, the dam, um, this was in May. Um, and then this is the where the second dam, uh, uh, three, two, three, four hundred feet down stream from there is is this dam. Um, the center part of it's gone, but you can see it actually has a curve in it, and I, there was a, I believe there was a road that went across, uh, they, they had a bridge across it. Um, and there's an abutment on the, the north side as well. It's not quite as well defined as the south side. Um, and of course, here's the, the village today and the mill pond as it is today. You see Lake Garfield um, and Terringham Road, uh, the dam, the new dam, and where it comes down across. So right in that area is where there were several mills with the fine factory, a cotton factory. Uh, this is the Conkpot River coming down through uh, the flats. What is this map? Uh, this is a, it's called LIDAR. Uh, so they, they fly over and, and take uh, infrared images and do a huge point cloud. And you get from this, you get uh, elevation data without trees, I mean, basically. So um, a little hard to see here, but so, actually, in this image, the library was under construction, so it doesn't show the library. But this is the dam right here. Here's the, the river. There's the foundation of the shingle mill. 
Um, here's the foundation of the paper mill uh, buildings back here. And that's where the water uh, seeps that came down. Can anybody access this? Yep. No, so it's a oh, free right. online site. The Mass GIS. Yeah, Mass GIS. Oh, yeah. I can send you an email. Yeah, I'd like to the link. Um, the, uh, it's the foundation there. Um, this is Bidwell Park, right near the water. This makes that huge uh, bend. You can see multiple foundations. So which one of those do you think was the was the coffee house? Uh, the worker's house? Uh, I think that is right here. Oh, over there. Yeah. It's around the bend. Um, so it's and it's in kind of a flat swampy area. Then the, the dam that you're referring to in back of Brookmead. There you go. Right there. Yeah. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Where? Where? Point. 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 Yeah. So Use your finger. You're referring to uh, over here, right? No. Well, directly above where you were pointing. Yeah. That whole vertical line. Right. This one here. No, no, no. The vertical oh, line. Oh, that one there. Yes. Yeah. Go look at the scale of that. That went yeah. all the way across. Right. right. Yeah, it's... Uh, I'll point to it, Rob, and we yeah. can't see it. Right there, that vertical line. Oh. Where's that in real life, Rob? So, I still can't pick, right, figure right out. Right here, there's this huge embankment. Um, Where is that in real life, though? I still can't picture. Can, can you zoom out this, a little bit? Yeah, this is. So, see yeah. Maybe. Um, so this is this is the paper mill up here. Right. This is about another quarter of a mile downstream. Um, so that's no this road. But it's basically where where uh, what's now called Parker Brook comes down, goes through the bottom of Brookme, and then goes out. Uh, and then just just above where the brook crosses underneath the Marlboro Road, you can see a line that's going pretty nearly left, and that's actually a um, a road you can track it. Yep. You can track it through there all the way back to right where. Here. Yeah. yeah. That that was that road that is referred to as as connecting through. Some of the some of the stories talk about there being a road from the village that came out below. So maybe that dam was actually across it. it yeah, it might have been. That actually makes it sense. It looks like it, it would point to that. I mean, but that's a huge amount of work. Yeah. That's really it's almost impossible to get back there now. There's so many trees. So many trees. But that. But what was that old road is actually still quite walkable. Yeah. And that's owned by the Lindsay's. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, but this uh, this LIDAR map is is really fascinating. Uh, and if you look up wow. in the in some of the old section, so this is uh, Terringham Road at, at the corner of Chibai here, and you can see cellar holes there. Um, yes. There's a couple of other cellar yeah. holes out in the back. There. So, so the LIDAR you know, gives you things that you can't see uh, uh, very well on the ground. Uh, and if you go out into Beartown, State so Forest. Amazing. It's amazing how many uh, how many cell holes there were out there. Uh, in Bear Town the areas that were totally uh, barren now. It looked like they never never had anything. So, so this one you can see all the wall. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's bad. Bad. see all the field lines and cell walls. So the houses don't show up just the solid foundation. Uh, so the the current houses show up as kind of a bump. So yeah. those are, but that's a, there's a cell hole, those are depressions, there's a cell hole, there's a cell hole, cell hole, that's a modern house. What's the resolution on that? Do you know? Um, it must be a matter of inches. Oh, for the vertical? It, it's incredible. Um, so there are actually, you can download 
uh, even a more detailed version of this. This is a statewide. Um, but you can get even more detail. This one. And, 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 I know what I'm doing tonight. Uh, it's spelled L I D. So, anyhow, uh, it's 8 o'clock. Um, uh, thank you very much for coming.